What Donald Trump is doing, it's equal parts the power of positive thinking, which is the church to the extent that it's a church that he grew up in. But it's also, it's, it's kind of David Koresh. It's kind of Jim Jones. Yeah. Welcome to this week's Wacky Moments of Leftist Extremism. Easter kicked off the week and that kicked up MSNBC panel fantasies about Donald Trump. I mean, next to Easter, he could be looking at reading his, uh, having nothing to do but read his God Bless the USA Bible in a prison cell. Yeah, they do kind of dream big over there. Joe Biden kicked off Easter with an official declaration marking it as Transgender Visibility Day. So the leftist media reacted the way that you would expect, by claiming that Donald Trump is a cult leader. What Donald Trump is doing, it's equal parts the power of positive thinking, which is the church to the extent that it's a church that he grew up in. But it's also, it's, it's kind of David Koresh. It's kind of Jim Jones. Yeah. Joy Reid is kind of Bozo the freaking clown, except he had better hair. Reid puts together a panel to argue that Trump is Jim Jones because he pointed out that Biden shouldn't have made an official declaration about the Trans Day of Visibility on Easter. And what Donald Trump is doing is saying, wait a minute, let me show you all these reasons you should doubt your faith and you should trust me and you should follow me. That is dangerous. I mean, take the trans proclamation, for instance. It is a weakening of faith to suggest that the Christian world should be concerned about that. Yeah, the media loves ignoring anything negative on Biden. Ignore that and listen to the lessons of the Bible as taught by MSNBC instead. But he's literally gotten his people to melt down their gold into a calf and worship it. Another sin of people who, if you believe that people should have followed Jesus and didn't, that was the other thing. Is that, well, we can't see your works. You're not a visible God. We want a visible God. Trump is saying, no, I'm a visible God. He's literally an idolater, Jim. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's making me lose my mind. Well, there's not much to lose there except hatred and deceit. Now, I love how Reed spouts her biblical lesson in one breath and just can't wait to promote murder through abortion in her next breath. It's scary stuff. J David Jolly, Jim Wallace, thank you both very much. Up next on The Readout, we've got huge, huge decisions on abortion from the Florida Supreme Court today that will impact the lives of millions, millions of women. The Readout continues after this. Leftist media bias did certainly continue throughout the week, promoting what they believe is good for the Biden administration. And that includes some really sick things, like the deaths of seven World Central Kitchen Aid workers in Gaza during an Israeli strike. They claim that's good for Joe Biden. Um, and so every instance of um, horror like this uh, gives the Biden administration more uh, opening to put clear contrast between uh, what they're trying to do, what they would argue they are trying to do responsibly in the region, uh, and what Netanyahu has been unwilling to do, I, I personally think is good for them. Um, Whew, that is cold. But nothing is more important to the leftist media than keeping addled-minded Joe in office. Now, on the lead with Jake Tapper on CNN, Tapper took on the role of party campaign strategist, all in order to urge Biden to abandon Israel in its war against Hamas terrorists, in order to secure those precious pro-Hamas votes in Michigan and Wisconsin that weren't supporting Joe in the primary. So let me posit another theory. Maybe those 46,000 people, because they are super engaged, they would turn out and vote, uh, basically a protest vote, even though uh, President Biden is going to be the nominee. They didn't need to do that, but they're motivated and they're engaged, as you say. Let's say they go and they vote for Jill Stein or Cornell West or Robert Kennedy Jr. I take your point, they're not gonna vote for Trump, but I, if I were you, and I'm sure you're a very smart guy and well-respected, I'm sure you, privately you agree with me at least, these 46,000 are not necessarily gonna vote for, for Joe Biden. I'm glad Tapper advises the chair of the Wisconsin Democratic Party. Free help for leftists is always available with a smile from the media. Christine Amanpour can't help but smile as her guest tells Israel to go F itself. Here's the thing, every, every time Israel say like, uh, Israel have the right to, to, to defend itself, Israel have the right to exist, and I would say, I would say like, Israel have the right to go F itself. <laughs> oh yeah, there's some journalism right there. Try to hide the smile, Christina. On The View, the host complained about Americans who are worried about making ends meet and being able to afford food under Bidenomics. So in order to make their point, they brought on a millionaire actress to downplay all those struggles. Yes, I know certain things, you know, inflation are still like an issue for people, 100%. But we've got some serious issues on the line here. More important than food and fuel prices. Well, I mean, what serious issues is Kira Sedgwick concerned about?
I mean, you know, our planet is dying. Like, we've got many other issues and fish to fry. It just seems so confusing to me. Like, who cares? We got fish to save. Exactly. We got fish to save. They're always busy trying to save something that stinks over there. ABC did a special look at the increase in grocery prices, but never even uttered the word Biden or Bidenomics. Sticker shock at the grocery store. According to new data that first appeared in the Wall Street Journal and obtained by ABC News, prices for hundreds of food items have jumped more than 50% since 2019. Rebecca, you have more, including how you can turn back time on your grocery bill, which is very important. So let's take a look at what $100 got you in 2019 and what it gets you now. And, and the visual is what really creates the contrast. Mm. So this is 2019, Michael. This is what you got in 2019 for $100. Come over here. This is the current day, what you get. And you see, there's an entire section over here that's missing because you're getting about 30% less these days. Yeah, virgin food, everything else. Everything. I, I'm, a, I'm a little surprised by how much you don't get now that you've got just, what, four or five years ago. It, it is really such amazing. a contrast. It's amazing. They can mention the difference from four years ago, but they don't want to mention what changed in that time. But the leftist media does always seem to have a hard time with history. This week, MSNBC's Joy Reid claimed without any evidence that Oklahoma is seeking to ban teaching about the 1921 Tulsa race massacre. What do you make of the fact that even now you have some Oklahoma officials who are trying to ban history that would include the history of the Tulsa massacre, even as your case is going on? Except that the Tulsa race massacre has been part of Oklahoma education standards since 2002, and in 2019, the state made those requirements even more specific. But hiding the truth in order to promote an agenda, that's exactly what you would expect from a leftist media that buries the truth and hears only what it wants. Right, PBS? That idea is that I am saying something, but I'm actually not saying. I'm inferring something, and then I have plausible deniability that I said it. So Trump is activating his followers by implying something, and then later fighting with the media over whether he said it or not. That has very strong consequences, not only for his campaign, but also for those kinds of statistics that Laura mentioned about violence. When he's saying the situation is dire, when he's saying democracy will end if I'm not elected, he is implying to some of his followers violence may be okay. I see. Trump is implying violence by saying democracy is at stake in the next election. First question for you, President Biden. How would you describe what's at stake in this election? I think our democracy is at stake. Not a joke. Oh, it seems there's a joke being played. It's just really not all that funny. I'm Eric Shiner from MRC TV asking you to head over to the MRC homepage and click on that donate button. Not a joke. Help keep videos like this one coming. Head over to MRCTV.org for the latest in videos, information, and entertainment. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe to these videos on the platforms that actually let you see us. We'll return next week with another look at Leftist Media Madness. I want to invite you as my guest on a very special, once-in-a-lifetime, seven-day post-election cruise in the Caribbean. Caribbean. It's going to be a blast.